Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, General Van Ovost, and thank you, General Cavoli, for being here today. Um, I want to thank both of you for your continued service and commitment to Ukraine. Um, it has been a very difficult time, and, and General Cavoli, I'll, I'll start with you, um, because I did just return from a trip uh, to Poland, um, Ukraine, where I spent three days uh, with a delegation traveling across the country into many different areas, and then on to, into Moldova, which is one of those other areas that's uh, pretty tenuous right now. Um, it's pretty darn clear that the American political system has been very ineffective in providing uh, the needed support to a fellow democracy there in Ukraine. Uh, so as we await the House's uh, finalized decision on a supplemental package, uh, what more can you do in your role uh, to leverage assistance from friends and allied nations in Europe or other areas to provide support for Ukraine? Um, I, w we work that very, very hard, Senator, as you know. First of all, I would point out that um, the principal coordinating mechanism for uh, aggregating Ukrainian demand and presenting it to allies and partners and soliciting their help and their contributions has been led by Secretary Austin since the very beginning with the uh, uh, the UDCG, the, the Ukraine Donors Coordination Group, uh, sometimes known as the Ramstein Group because it sometimes meets there. Um, 50 nations, just over 50 nations come together about every six weeks and, um, and we, we coordinate at a ministerial level. That is preceded by weeks of hard work between our policy staffs and their policy staffs and US UCOM with the SAGU works very hard to get the specifics of the Ukrainian demand and their needs and consult with them about what they need to bring that forward. However, it, it, it's difficult. A lot of this is dependent on production levels at this point. How much ammunition we can produce, how many missiles we can produce. And so in that regard, I spend a lot of time working with the Secretary General and the Secretariat at NATO um, to increase, to work with national armaments directors to increase the amount of production we can do. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm glad that we do have partners that are, are stepping up and assisting. They understand how significant this is and what could happen to all of us um, if Ukraine falls. Oftentimes, Americans are very short-sighted. You know, what is our immediate need today? Um, what is our immediate want? But I think there are very long-term repercussions to our country should Ukraine fall. And uh, I think we need to keep our eyes open as we're looking to the future and what will happen if we continue to allow countries like Russia, like China, like Iran, like North Korea to continue to spread around this globe and the pressures it puts on our own nation. Um, so I thank you for being uh, such a, a great leader in this fight. Um, I know that in the lead up to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the intelligence community did declassify um, a number of reports which shed light on Russia's true intentions. And it was a very proactive approach, and I'm, I'm really thankful for that. And it helped us counter a lot of that Russian disinformation that was being pushed out there. And we still see a lot of Russian propaganda. Um, can you speak to how uh, various information sharing programs are assisting us in, in pushing back um, against some of the common security challenges that are faced by uh, Europe and our friends? Yeah, yes, ma'am, absolutely. Um, first of all, in terms of collection, um, you know, the variety of ways we collect, we, we have to, um, we rely on access and, and geographical access. Um, to other countries in order to be able to, to, to collect information. Um, nations have been very generous with us, uh, not just allies, but partners as well, in allowing us to, uh, to, to operate with and from uh, their countries. That has been invaluable. Frequently, that leads to very high level and detailed information sharing programs. We have allies who have accesses that we do not and we have accesses that they do not. And so it's very much mutually beneficial. The last thing I'd say, ma'am, is that the uh, interaction with Ukraine and their security services has provided us a vast amount of information as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and I will yield back my five seconds, uh, Mr. Chair, but thank you both for being here today.